This should be the last podcast of this uh, staff note, uh, the final staff note on uh, planning and mainstreaming adaptation into fiscal policy. So we'll read off a bunch of adaptation plan measures as recommended by UNFCCC and the European Commission. Uh, so here is UNFCCC and EU Commission and they have elements. So here element A, laying the groundwork and addressing the gaps. So we have discussed the gaps, adaptation gaps elsewhere. There could be knowledge gaps, uh, institutional ga gaps or barriers and financial gaps and so on. Here we are much more focused on finance and fiscal policies. And EU uh, Commission uh, does preparing the ground for adaptation and B here is preparatory elements and B here is assessing risks and vulnerabilities to climate change. And here C is identifying adaptation options. Uh, here C is implementation strategies, implementing adaptation action, reporting, monitoring and review, monitoring and evaluation of adaptation activities. So each color block here corresponds to a block in the adaptation plan tracker. You can follow up with the details since I'm not going to be able to track the color codes with the uh, d explainer uh, each time. A country is considered to have taken a step if any of the detailed measures in the block have been completed. So GCF is Green Climate Fund, uh, NAP is of course National Adaptation Plan and this is the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. So these are the reports, bit dated but you can go and read up. Maybe they will be updated one of these days but they are still uh, you know, very, very relevant. So let me read UNFCC first and then the European Commission. So UNFCCC, uh, element A, laying the groundwork and, adap and addressing gaps, initiating and launching the process to formulate and implement national adaptation plans, submitting proposals to the Green Climate Fund readiness for NAPs, receiving approval for Green Climate Fund readiness funding for NAP, formulating a mandate for the process, so that would include stakeholder consultations and other things we talked about, defining institutional arrangements and a coordination mechanism, consulting stakeholders, so there it is, synthesizing available information, stock taking of relevant activities and assessing gaps and needs. <coughs> 8-1 developing roadmaps for the process to formulate and implement NAPs, which is critical. Completed roadmaps for the process to formulate and implement NAPs. In the preparatory elements, we have analyzing past climate and climate change scenarios. So you take the historical data and future scenarios to make your judgments and priorities. Comprehensively assessing climate vulnerability, which requires a lot of data, so data needs have to be uh, immediately assessed and then uh, closed as soon as possible to have reliable vulnerability at spatial resolution that's necessary to take adaptation actions. Undertaking activities on integrating adaptation into national and subnational development planning, identifying adaptation options to address key vulnerabilities, appraising, prioritizing and ranking adaptation options, which is very critical, compiling draft NAPs for consultation and endorsement of whoever the uh, oversight bodies are, communicating national adaptation plans and under implementation strategies UNFCCC pro, uh, recommends designing coherent implementation strategies including synergy between the uh, various activities, prioritizing climate change adaptation in national planning so that development plans do not ignore critical adaptation needs or climate risks in that sense, implementing and managing actions in NAPs to reduce vulnerability and facilitate integration of adaptation into development planning through policies, programs, projects and other activities. So we are using vulnerability, resilience uh, and adaptation kind of together. Uh, hopefully adaptation is not only going to reduce resilience but also enhance res uh, not only reduce vulnerability but also enhance resilience okay uh, finally reporting monitoring and review steps el designing applying a monitoring and evaluation framework or system is recommended communicating progress on the process to formulate and implement NAPs is needed monitoring and periodically reviewing the process is essential Iterative updating of NAPs is critical, keeping in mind that 
not everything can be constantly updated, especially if you uh, have to retrofit buildings or uh, design new projects with adaptation risk information. You cannot keep changing the plans, so that's something to keep in mind. What does the EU Commission say? Step A, preparing the ground for adaptation. Coordination structure is needed. Stakeholder involvement in policy development is uh, recommended as a critical step uh, in preparing the ground. Assessing risks and vulnerabilities to climate change overlap here. Knowledge gaps and knowledge transfers have to be understood. Okay. Current and projected climate change is needed, as we said here, <coughs> which is obvious. Without that, you cannot really plan anything for adaptation, uh, let alone mainstreaming adaptation into fiscal policies. Identifying adaptation options, identification of adaptation options, funding resources identified and allocated, which has been the running discussion throughout this course. Implementing adaptation action as a step D. Mainstreaming adaptation in planning processes, implementing adaptation. So there are uh, talks, but then decisions and actions come down to these steps. Monitoring and evaluation of adaptation activities. Monitoring and reporting is uh, very essential and evaluation is of course critical to make sure that all the steps, uh, the pillars are properly followed and financial resilience is ensured, public financial management is critically uh, reviewed and evaluated and public investment management is also monitored and reported and oh, evaluated. Okay. Finally, countries with published national adaptation plan. Obviously, we will not read all of these, but alphabetically, you st start with Albania, end up with Kiribati, small island state. This is, I don't know, maybe an emerging economy. Uh, so there's a mix uh, because of alphabetical arrangements. Korea, which is presumably South Korea since North Korea is not playing with the rest of the world. Uh, you have West Bank and Gaza here, which is uh, important to note because all kinds of geopolitical tensions there, but still West Bank and Gaza have uh, published their national adaptation plan. So despite all the issues, they have kept their focus on their adaptation needs as well. Okay, so this brings us to the conclusion of this particular staff note on uh, planning and mainstreaming adaptation to climate change into fiscal policies. I will move to taking few ideas from several books on rural adaptation, urban adaptation and other case study kind of uh, reports or books to add uh, you know additional uh, points to adaptation as a whole. Just like adaptation is very uh, case specific, region specific, the books are not really uh, you know from pers first principle that can be applied everywhere, but we have looked at principles for developing adaptation strategies with the World Bank report, which was the main uh, set of podcasts. Then we have looked at uh, IMF staff notes to add <coughs> economic principles and uh, fiscal policies, etc. Now we'll add uh, additional information. Maybe I'll put them under uh, a rubric that makes sense uh, in terms of searching and where to look for things. Okay, so see you in the next set of podcasts on climate adaptation. Okay. <laughs>